Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesigningtechtips.com. Well, this is another in our Divi for Beginners series. You can find the link to that playlist down below this video. Today, we're going to look at the awesome Divi email opt-in form. As you can see, we've got one here. Fantastic way for collecting people's names and email addresses for your email lists. I'm using MailChimp for this one today, and I'll take you through the process of getting an API key and setting it all up. But it's a great way of growing your lists and getting information to your customers. So let's get started. I'm going to delete what I've got here. I've already got my Visual Builder open on this page. I'm going to go down. Let's delete this and we'll start from scratch. OK, I've got a section here, the blue tab. Inside that section, I've got a row, the green tab. In fact, if I delete this, as this is a beginner's video, if you want to start a new section, just roll over any section. You'll find a little blue button. Add a new section, just click on it. I'm going to use a regular section. Once you put a section in, it'll prompt you to put a row in. I put one in there with a single column. Let's go find our little email opt-in. And there it is right there. Let's go ahead and dock this on the left. Make it easy to see. So it's going to pop up with the email opt-in settings here. This is the generic form. If you decide you want the fields and don't want any, any information at all, you can just delete that. I'll show you what's going to happen if we delete the title and the content there. It'll stretch full width. Of course, I want a little title in mind there. Put in what you want. Down below, we've got what the, you want your button to say. Obviously, put in what you want there as well. As you can see, that's changed down there. The reason it's orange and when I hover over it, it's blue. That's the way I set it up initially in my customizer. But you can style that button any way you want. And down below, let's just put that content back in. I've got no real content. Obviously, you want to say something about your updates or whatever it is you've got going on there. Fantastic. If we roll down a little bit more, we've got a footer credit here. And what that's going to do is put a little bit of information just down below there. And if you want to, you can make it dynamic. A little disk over here on every little text field, you'll find that little disk up in the right hand corner there. If we click on it, we can put dynamic content. What that is, it's pull, pulling information from the database itself. So in this case, I'd probably use the current date. As it says, latest updates here, gives you today's date, and that will change to tomorrow's date tomorrow, obviously. So before, let's say updated daily, or whatever you want to say, obviously, I'm going to put a gap there, so there's a gap between the updated daily and that dynamic date there. And as you can see, it says updated daily, December 28th, 23. Afterwards, I'm going to put something like, we will never span you. So I'm going to add a gap first by hitting my space bar. I'm going to say, we will never spam you. Whatever it is you want to say, obviously. And as you can see, it's put it in there. Like I say, that date's going to change and increment every day. Great. When you're happy, just hit the save. Now the email account, this is really important. I'll go through this in a second. If you don't put an email account in here, then when we save this, this won't work. And I'll show you that in a moment. We'll go back and put one in. Next on down is the fields. And you can decide whether you want it like it is, the generic first name, last name, email. You can decide to not show the first name. You can decide to not show the last name. Just have an email if you want. Or you can choose to have a single name field for the name. That's my option usually. I've found that the less amount of info you want people to put in, the more likely they are to actually use your little form there. Success action. I'm happy for it to display a message. You can actually redirect them to a different URL, top of the page, bottom of the page, different site if you want to. But I'm happy for it to display a message. Now let's see. Thanks for joining. Whatever it is you want to say on your... And that'll pop up after they hit the subscribe button there. Spam protection, if you need to, you can add a third party spam protection such as Google Recapture in here. Now you'd have to go over to Google 
and actually add an API key if you want to use that. I'm happy not to do that. As there's no info field there, I find that these don't get too much spam, but that may be different for your site. If you want to link the module somewhere, you can do so here. That means anywhere they click on this module, it'll take them to wherever you put that URL in there. I don't think I want to link on mine. I'm just happy to get the subscribers. Backgrounds. We've done a whole video on backgrounds. You can do some amazing things. Let's just uh, make it look a little bit more interesting. I'm going to get rid of that color. I'm going to put a gradient background in. You've got color, gradient, image, video, background pattern, and background mask here. I'm going to hit the plus to add a background gradient. Puts a green and a blue in by default. Let's change that green, perhaps a purple. Get some crazy colors go. If you want to add a new stop, you can go crazy with this gradient. Now I probably need to do a whole video on gradients. Add a new stop, just slide anywhere on this bar here. Left click, you've added a new gradient. Click on that little gradient you just added. You can make it any color you want. And you can keep going and going. I won't go too deeply into this. If you want to get rid of it, right click on it. Remove the gradient stop. You're back to how you are. Great. Well, I'm just going to add an image. I think that's the one I had in there before. And I'm going to blend that background gradient with this image so we can read that text better. To do that, still on the image tab, just roll down. Background image blend. I'm going to put it to multiply. That multiplies that gradient with that image. That makes that writing a lot easier to read, in my opinion. OK, well, let's move on to our design tab here. Layout. You've got body on left, form on right. That's what we've got at the moment. You can flip it around the other way. You can stack it. You can flip it around the other way if you stack it. I'm pretty happy with the way it was. When we re reduced down the tablet and mobile, let's have a look at that. I'm going to put it back to how we had it. It's going to stack when we get down to the smaller devices. So if we flip it to mobile down here, I've got my little purple button expanded. On the left hand side, we're on desktop mode. If we flip it to tablet mode, it's fine. That's still side by side on tablet. If we flip it to mobile mode, we've got it stacked like that. And that works for me. Obviously, you can adjust this how you want. I'm going to take it back to desktop there. Now, you can choose to make these fields full width at the moment. They're taking up all the container space, which is the column they're in at the moment. So if you take that off and this off, you've got the two fields on one line there, which is great. I'm actually happy with the way it was. That's a nice little space saving option. If we go into the fields, you can decorate them how you want. Field background color, obviously that's the background color that we've got there. Let's just take that down a bit. I'm going to make it white, which it is already. I'm going to click on the color. I'm going to drag the opacity down a bit so we've got a bit of that image bleeding through. Just gives it a bit of an interest value. And now we've done that, I want to make that text more legible. Next down, we've got the text color. I'm just going to turn it black. You should be able to see it nicely on that field. Great. Focus background color is when they actually click on it. You can bring it back to being white, perhaps, when you click on it. Just like that. It's entirely up to you. Focus text color, again, you can change it there. If you want more space between your fields, give it more margin on the bottom. And it'll spread it out for you. Margin on the top will push it down. But I'm happy that's, that's giving it 30 on top and 30 on bottom on both fields there. Don't like something you've done with Divi, simply delete it. It'll go back to the default for you. Now, padding is going to make these fields taller. So, for instance, if I put 20 on the top of this, you see it's added 20 to the top of there. If I make that 50, it'll make it a little more easy for you to tell. That's put 50 on the top there. And any of these fields, if you hit the chain, it'll do the opposite side. Again, I'm happy with the way it was. And of course, you can make the font anything you want. If you click on the default there, 
it'll bring up a list to audition a different font just roll over it and there's a crazy amount to choose from i've been using divi for i don't know six years since version two seven or eight years even and i've not got through all those but i'm going to leave mine on the default today and of course you've got all the regular styles for fonts italicize uppercase upper lowercase underline and strike through and while we're talking about that i might just pop over here my title there all these things are connected with a little paintbrush if you click on that little paintbrush it'll take you to the design for that particular element and there's our title text there i'm just going to capitalize that and let's make it perhaps semi-bold fantastic well let's close that up We've got fields, we've got text, we've got body text. And again, you can go to it with a paintbrush or just grab it there. I'm happy with the way my body text is displaying. I want to go into my fields though. I think I want to make my fields a bit more rounded, like my button is there to do that. Go back into the fields. If we roll down, we didn't quite finish with this. Roll down past the text. You've got text shadow if you want it. I'm going to leave mine as is for the moment. Rounded corners. If you've got the chain highlighted as it is by default, it'll do all four corners at once. I want to make those rounded, so I'm going to put perhaps 50 picks. Just put in the 50, it'll put the PX there for you. Let's give a nice rounded corners, a bit like we've got on our button there. You could add borders if you want to. I'm leaving mine just as they are. You can also add a bit of box shadow if you want to. Again, I'm going to leave mine just as it is. Fantastic. Well, we looked at text, title text, body text, and results message text. You can change that little message that pops up here, make it bigger, smaller, however you want. Color it how you wish. And again, I'm going to leave mine just as it is. Now, if you want to restyle your button, just go into the button. You'll find a little switch there. Switch it from no to yes. And you can color and use whatever text on your button, however you wish here. I'm going to leave mine just as it is. Got a little arrow chevron there. You can change it to whatever icon you wish by just selecting it there. Great. Like I say, I'm quite happy with the way my button's looking. So I'm going to leave it just as it is. I know I've changed that icon, but that's fine. Sizing wise, you can make this module bigger or smaller. We don't really need to do this today, but if you want to, you could pull the width down so it gets a little shorter like that. And then you can align it left, center or right of the container that it's in, which is the column within the row there. I'm happy with the way it was, so I'm going to delete that and pop that back to center as it's full width. That's not going to make a lot of difference. Spacing wise, we know about spacing from the other videos. You'll always find margin and padding. Margins are going to push it down. I'll put 100 pixels on top. Pushes it down. You can actually use negative margin and drag it up the other way if you want to. If I put a negative behind there, it drags it up by a minus 100 pixels and you can overlap things at the top like that. Let's get rid of that. Padding is going to add space from the outside of the module to the inside content. So I'm going to give it 50 pixel round for a bit of breathing space. Again, just put in the 50. It'll put in the picks. Hit the chain. It'll do the opposite side. Let's do the same for left and right. Great. Or you can add borders and box shadows. I don't think I want a border, but if you want a border, you can do it all around, top, right, bottom, left, individually. If I was to give it a purple border all around, just give it how thick you want your border. It's black at the moment, maybe hard to see, but if I turn that to purple or even a red, you'll probably be able to see it better. You've got a little border around it just like that. I don't particularly want a border on mine. So to get rid of it, just delete that value. It'll go back to zero. Fantastic. Box shadow. I like to use a bit of box shadow, especially on white backgrounds. It just lifts it off the page a little bit, gives it a slight 3D look. Not going to use any filters or transform or animation. I believe we're almost done. I would like to put curved corners on it just to keep in style with our fields a little bit there. So if we shut that up, that's actually in border just above that box shadow. Rounded corners right at the top. 
let's give it say 50 pixels and see how that looks again i've just put in the 50 that may be just a little bit too much i don't know i think that works fine and we've got the chain check so it does it all for at once well i'm happy with that but let's just go back to the content remember we had email account and content and you've got plenty to choose from here constant contact etc there's some very well known ones there i've got mine on mailchimp because that's what i've been using but we didn't select a list because it won't let us we haven't actually added the api key now to get your api key in which is imperative if you want to use this now if i save this now without putting an api key in and we save our draft or publish the page exit the visual builder look what was going to happen we'll roll on down we've lost all of our fields all we've got is a bit of text there and no sub that's because we haven't put that api key in so let's re-enable the visual builder and i'll go over to mailchimp now i think mailchimp's free up to used to be a thousand subscriber i think they've taken that down now but that's what i've got here to actually get your api key from mailchimp go over to your profile name over here click on it hit on your profile here which is the page i'm actually on go over to where it says extras there there's a little drop down if you click on it you'll find api keys if you roll down here's one so that I created before, I'll probably have to blur some of this out. There's some sensitive information on there. Hit the little create a key button. We'll give it a name. I'll call mine Divi New. I'm going to hit the generate key button. And it's given us a key there. I'm going to hit the copy to clipboard. Now I'm going to go back to my Divi. Down to our little module. As you can see, now we've got the builder enabled. We've got our fields back there. Let's go into the module itself. And we'll close up that text, go back into the email account here. I'm going to set add. I'll call it Divi New, call it what you want, just so you know what it is. I'm going to paste that API key just down below where it says API key, funnily enough. And when you're happy, hit the submit. And now when we hit select a list, it'll give my list that I've got up there. Let's say System 22 News. And anytime anybody puts their name, email in there, subscribed, that's the list it's going to add that name and email to. When you're happy, hit your save changes. Now if we save the page changes and exit the visual builder, we'll roll on down. We've got our fields back there and that's now a live list. They can click on it. Remember we changed that field color and email and they can hit the sub button right there. And there we are, it's popped up with our little thanks for joining message. If we refresh the page now, it'll go back to how it was. And there you have it. That's the great Divi email opt-in. Really handy for picking up names and emails for your lists. Really easy to work with too. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget if you have any questions, pop them below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video like this one. If you have enjoyed this today, please hit the like, subscribe, ring the bell, share and comment. There's plenty more coming. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.